Uh, hi, uh, uh, thank you for having me here. I'm Atul, I'm the founder of 8848 Digital. Uh, we are certified uh, ERP Next partners and uh, uh, gold sponsors for this wonderful, wonderful conference. <laughs> thank you. So, so the question that, that keeps coming to me is what is 8848? So we, we, we took this name from the height of the astonishing Mount Everest. Uh, which stands tall in the calm, uh, with a simple aim of reaching such highest points uh, in our walks of life, innovating and creating value as we go along for people and businesses. Before I start, I would like to thank the entire, entire of team who has been responsible for uh, achieving all milestones of what we have till date. Uh, the entire of Rappi team, the entire of it, the 8848 digital team, uh, my family, and every individual who has been part of this journey without which even I would not have been here. Uh, my journey started uh, long back in 2001 as a, as, a, as a software developer, all out of passion in my pre-college days, where uh, I built uh, 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 some applications on VB6. Uh, little knowledge that I have about uh, web technologies, leave aside uh, open source. Uh, my professional career started in 2008 where I was introduced to the concept of metadata uh, by an application development company, WebNotes. Uh, we built uh, an ERP system for a hospital beds manufacturing company who had, uh, who had a monopoly in the market. Uh, uh, and uh, this metadata framework uh, is what today we call as a low the low-code application framework Frappe. Uh, my my entrepreneurial journey started in uh, 2009, where we became an application development company uh, using open source technologies. We never looked back into, into proprietary systems. Uh, extending services towards UI, UX, uh, native hybrid mobile application development, we became a full service uh, design and technology agency. The whole idea was simple, innovate, build new things. And through a course of, of around a decade, we have been able to cater to a bunch of brands across BFSI, healthcare, entertainment, age, like a bunch of digital agencies, jewelry being our uh, uh, expertise in domain, retail, uh, a bunch of portals, marketplaces for startups and enterprises alike. But there was always, always some discussions where uh, within the team where we need to move from the smaller, the smaller or mid-sized projects and catering into enterprises as a whole. Uh, in 2018 is where we, re we, re we registered 8848 Digital, and uh, we also got our processes certified uh, on quality and security systems under ISO. Uh, there was, though we were in touch with the Frappe team for good long, uh, we were never able to kind of associate towards implementing a project through and through. And the core reason of what we attributed to that was we didn't have a dedicated team to kind of operate onto it. And that is what we changed fundamentally in 2021. We set up a dedicated team towards implementation, towards customizations, towards support. And later during the year, we got ourselves certified as official and certified partners. Uh, since 2021, the story has completely changed for us. Uh, we have an entire team working on ERP Next implementation support towards Frappe application development as apps. And over a, over a duration of a year plus, we have catered to nine enterprises with OEM support, uh, which would not have been possible without the entire Frappe sales and the delivery team. Uh, <laughs> thank you. So big shout to the enterprise sales team. So they have been fantastic along with the delivery team. So, it is all has it 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 is it is not just uh, for us to kind of close deals. They have been with us throughout, supporting uh, at the places where where we found our weaknesses in, and they have covered those gaps for us. Uh, in parallel, there were also a a bit of non OEM support implementations of what we did, and today we stand for over plus, over 25 plus member team dedicated providing services only on Frappe and ERP Next. A simple case study is what we'll walk through. Guru Kroba Exports, they are jewelry, diamond jewelry manufacturers based out of Surat. Uh, they are a group company with, uh, with, with a lot of child companies there. Uh, before ERP Next, they were operating on traditional silo systems. Again, the same problems where you don't get reporting, you don't have transactions, you don't have visibility on the business at all. 
What we did for them, very simple. We implemented ERP Next, and that is what, that is what, 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 was, what was required. But jewelry being jewelry, the manufacturing was to be, to be customized, a bit, uh, a bit of heavy customizations on the manufacturing and the sales module on the pricing side. Uh, I'll just take some time to, to actually run you through what we did. We didn't do anything fancy. It was all about creating those necessary doc types, doc fields, and that relevance, which could make things easy. Uh, any jewelry as such requires a lot of detailing to be done, which within a BOM is not possible where you can list all raw materials all in a go, primarily because of the combinations of what they have. It is practically impossible to remember the code of what you will have across this range, uh, what an item would have. So we created a few child doc types you, through templates of items and created columns for those item attributes. Uh, we replicated this across. Maybe this is a simple way of explaining it, but there's a lot of logic of what we built behind to make data kind of uh, relevant to the BOM. Uh, so there were a bunch of changes within the BOM through custom fields added through. Uh, plus, on the manufacturing front, uh, they didn't want to operate as an individual job card. They wanted to kind of combine job cards together, operate as one, and then divide it across where you have different timings, scraps, and everything coming out of it. So that was some kind of a logic of what we built inside. And then again, on the pricing side, uh, ERP Next would offer you a price on a fixed price or on a promotional scheme, but jewelry operates real time. You pick the gold rate, you pick the diamond prices, you pick the gemstone prices, you, you, you pick making charges and add those. So a, a bit of logic, a bit of API integrations was enough for us to achieve it. What And how did we do it? Simple. We made custom doc types, we made child doc types, we, we, we created a bunch of uh, doc fields. Uh, made, a fap, made a Frappe application with client server scripts. Uh, we had to override certain default ERP Next functionalities specifically towards deriving rates for an item. And all this was achieved without any change to the core Frappe or ERP Next functionality. I would like to run you all through a few use cases on the development of what we have done. Though as a, as a unit, we do not promote extensive customizations, but there are scenarios in which there is a customization that is, that is required to get done. Uh, sales flow. So on the right is what we have a standard ERP Next sales flow. And uh, this is of what we customized where we got a pro forma invoice and a commercial invoice added between the flow. Uh, all achieved through backward compatibility where you can go with the default flow in case if you do not want to create these. So a bit of settings, a bit of... Uh, a bit of configurations, a bit of status changes here and there. Again, installable as a Frappe application, no changes to the core. Uh, concepts like uh, rebates or free of charge, you, uh, you may have an item, buy one, get one free, buy one, get two free, but what if you want to do an item amount and give any amount based on that item? So there is always an agreed value, there is an actual value. You need to match your actual free value to your agreed value. And which items are actually giving you those amounts is what you get to see. So simple customizations here where uh, we were able to achieve. Uh, uh, on the accounting dimensions, we have monthly, yearly, we have all periods over there. But there was one specific requirement where they wanted a, uh, an accounting dimension to get added and these columns to be split, to be split across. So these are a few uh, pieces of what we did on the finance front. Uh, there was also a requirement where there was a BOM-like structure required, but they didn't want items to, to get added. So that is what we call as a BOQ. So a BOQ then converts into a tender. Uh, RFQ is floated on confirmation. You then make a project. And uh, then there is variations of what then follows the same cycle through a variation tender. Uh, simple. We use the reporting structure. We, we use the data table. Uh, we, we use this data field to kind of create a hierarchy of what you see on the left and had all the action items on the top. This is a custom report completely built up, but with all functionalities of what you could do with a form, including add, edit, looking at it, running it, running the filters, simple through. So all this, this entire flow was easily managed through one single screen. Uh, something like employer PF contributions is, uh, so PF as a default is what we have, but we don't have anything on the employer side of contribution. So what we miss in the, in the salary process is that uh, we, don't, uh, we see only one part of the PF and not the other side of it. 
So in the salary component, we added a checkbox. In the salary structure, we added a child table for adding your contributions along with formula in a seamless way of how you would actually create a component without making any changes to it. Uh, then line it up in the salary slip and ha have a, had a new child table for computing the value. Uh, this again gets posted into the JV. There were a few changes done over there as well. And uh, we were able to, to achieve that seamlessly. Uh, there were cases, again, we did hear talks on e-commerce, but this was a very simple piece of what we did. Uh, uh, Sport Network was a project that was running on Code Igniter. We, we, had, we had built it up. Uh, soon to realize that we can't scale with features of what they were demanding. Uh, it all started with a simple CMS system, but later they added, they wanted to have accounts, they wanted to have a bunch of inventory, valuation, and all pieces added. Uh, a, very, a, a, very use, a, a very simple use case for ERP Next to be used as a backend. So we let go the entire of the backend. We got ERP Next in, build custom APIs, and use the existing UI to kind of run it through. So we were able to get the home page running. We were able to get the listing page, the detail page, all of those pages, including item variants of what you can see to you on the, on the screen. There were cases where we had built uh, uh, mobile applications as well. Again, jewelry. Uh, jewelry has always been a sweet spot. So uh, uh, th this is a simple digital catalog of what, of what we have built up. The item groups is what you see in the second screen. The item, uh, the item master with variants is what you see on the other screen. And a custom form and a custom doc type at the, at the very end. A very simple API integration done where uh, things uh, can be accessed on the mobile as well. Uh, uh, there was a use case where uh, we got in, uh, uh, though we had uh, e-invoicing and e bill integrated, there, uh, there, were, uh, there were requests of uh, to be reconciliations and uh, GST filing to be done. Now, not that we call uh, anyways close to being a GST experts, uh, but uh, the, the simplest thing for us was to get someone who was in the space integrated within ERP Next. So like Adequare offers you e-invoicing and e uh, with clear tax, we did e e-invoice integration. We did a complete GSP integration with them where all your sales invoices and purchase invoices get punched directly into clear tax. You use the clear tax portal for a to be reconciliation and generating all reports starting from GSTR1 to GSTR9 and also file it from the system. Uh, what additional effort is that you put in uh, within ERP Next is actually nothing. We did everything on your creation of e-invoice and submission of purchase invoice where data gets directly punched inside the clear access portal. Another integration of what I would like to highlight is DocuSign. Uh, we did uh, a, a bit of work uh, with integrating DocuSign as well. So a DocuSign setting where you enter a DocuSign app, uh, you then have a a signature document where you select the doc type, you select your print format, and you select roles that will be uh, digitally signing that particular document. So it's not a single role. You can have up to four roles. We didn't keep it within a child table. There were reasons. Uh, and whenever a print format gets created, a document gets created over here. And uh, the workflow, the standard workflow, will take care of your signing by redirecting you to the DocuSign site. And after signing is complete, you actually come back in in ERP Next. Uh, future plans for us, very, very simple. We have broken down into multiple parts. Uh, the implementation. So uh, we will continue upselling services to, to enterprises, the existing base that we have. Enable new enterprises, again, uh, with the help of Frappe Enterprise team. Uh, uh, build an onboarding version for SMBs where we don't want to miss on the small and medium businesses either. Uh, we will build an a, a, a onboarding portal where the implementation cost goes low and provide an affordable support to them as well. On the development, build integrations like what we have done till now, enabling an ecosystem. Uh, unfortunately, till now, we have not been able to push these apps on FC Marketplace. So that is an immediate plan of what we have, to have these apps available on the marketplace for everyone to use. Uh, open source, we have, not been great we have not been great contributors at all. We find this as a big weakness at our side. So there is a lot of functionality of what we have built. We plan to put them in the core and also contribute in terms of issue resolution for GitHub issues that have been raised. Uh, 
A 25 plus team is actually helping us, but there is a lot of scope for expansion. We are very clear in terms of hiring, training, every aspect that requires within ERP Next, including consultants, developers, project managers, domain experts, and the, and the supporting team as well. Uh, we plan to have local presence, at least for our enterprise clients, uh, such that we can serve them better than what we have. And the most important for, of all, uh, just have fun uh, all, all along the way. Thank you so much for having me here, and it's a pleasure. <laughs>